and I'm doing this. I'm like, no one's gonna f- say yes. <laughs> Why am I doing this? Yeah, you're like I wouldn't say door to door salesman about yeah. your golf game. <laughs> yeah, hey, I uh, shot 68 last week. You were you know, getting <laughs> right, five so grand. What I'm on the edge of my seat. <laughs> Four play presented by Marshall Marshall Sports Marshall Sports. We got myself, Frankie, and Dan Rappaport. We're at Myrtle Beach. Very exciting times. The Barstool Classic, sixth annual, sixth fucking Barstool Classic. That's that's wild to think about. But that bad boy's kicking off two days. People are listening. We're at Caledonia Fish. And golf club? Is that what it's called? I think it's Fish and Golf Club. Which cool yeah, yeah, I think often. that is right. Have you played there? Yes. Um, not a full round though. We went and filmed some stuff um, when we were out here. We did like a commercial. Oh, that's right. And then we played the 18th hole, and they're famous for having like a really, really good hang on 18. And then everyone chirps to people coming up 18. They make like little dollar bets, and they go nuts if you hit the green and miss the green. It's unbelievable. There's like 50 people up there. That clubhouse coming 18 looks awesome. That's like yeah. the iconic picture, I think. Yep. That I've seen a bunch of because we played True Blue when we were here. Yeah. Dan's first weekend. That's right. When he tried, when we tried to make him new like lurch, ten thousand degrees that week. That was I, can't, I can't watch those videos. <laughs> no, I did. Yeah, no, man. that was that was thrown into the fire. That yeah, was those, tough. Those videos are hard watch. <laughs> yeah, I no, I don't watch <laughs> anything of ourselves. You know, no. you can't watch that shit. You can't listen to yourself. Um, that was True Blue. True Blue and Caledonia are like sister courses. They're both Mike Strands. They're both obviously True Blue is the one I've played. It was phenomenal. I heard Caledonia is just as good. Similar with the strands and all the architecture and all that. So I'm very excited to see it uh, tomorrow, which is actually today when people are listening to this. So we'll be in Myrtle for a few days. Excited to be here. Weather's perfect. Looking at the beach right now as we started doing this. So it's great to be in Myrtle Beach. Um, we just came back from California. We, we woke hell- up on the Pacific and now we're looking at the Atlantic. It's a wild way to spend a Sunday. No, it's today Monday. Today's Monday. 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 Damn. It was a. It was a one of those. I is such a day that I booked a hotel room inside of an airport today. Yeah, it was I've a never t- done yeah. before. Yeah, what was that? It was like a pod. It's called Minute Suites, and I this is a hack. Fat Perez told me about it. Uh, it. Was the first time I heard about it like six months ago, and then somebody last night on our dad bod trip was like, "I think Dallas Airport has Minute Suites." So I just went on and looked it up this morning while we were taxiing out. It's like fifty bucks for an hour, and you could get it up to like three or four hours if you really want to. And it's just like a tiny little room with, I wouldn't even call it a bed. It's like a, a cushion, cushiony, mattressy thing that they just give you a pillow. There's no blanket in there. And they get you TV. And then you got a desk. You can work. You can charge everything, obviously. And you can turn all the lights out. And you can just kind of do your thing. It's and a masturbation booth. Is what you're describing. That's where my head went. They give you a slab of cushion and a TV and some Wi-Fi. And a great Wi-Fi connection. My concern was like... There's a couple loose loose rags on the side. (laughs) There's a little hand cream included in the room as well. A couple crusty rags in there. (laughs) Yeah. I I was worried that like since you're in an airport, there's got to be just cameras everywhere. So I wasn't going to try any funny business. That's true. There probably are. There's got to be cameras. I every just, inch of they an can't airport. put a camera inside the room. Is that illegal? It's yeah. gotta be. It's in an air. It's an airport. It I feel matter. like it's at a an private airport, room. They don't have I bathrooms don't in the. They don't have them in the bathrooms at the airport. They don't. No, definitely not in the stall where you could like see people's dicks and stuff. Maybe I feel like entrance. at the airport, anything goes at the airport. As far no, as security, it's like the safest place once you're beyond security, wouldn't it? I always True. feel the safest I possibly could be. Really? Yeah. yeah. But you know, you seen like they do the tests about what percentage of like actual weapons that TSA. True. Catches and it's not a super. Maybe it's actually the least safe place because everyone, mo- the majority of people get their weapons taken away. And then if one person gets it, you know, he's doing damage. I had, you know, how they do the, uh, you can't have like liquid over however many ounces and all that. Well, I had an incident when I was leaving San Diego a couple weeks ago when I was out there where I just, San Diego traffic just, just hurt me. And this, and the rental car spot was just too far. So, long story short, I show up like, 24 minutes before my plane's supposed to take off and they won't check the bags obviously i've got like three bags and i I was just like all right you guys just put them on the next flight i've got you know tsa pre and i've got clear so i'll be able to get through get on in time and they're like we just we can't we can't even access the thing to check your bags and it's a faa hazard or whatever to put the bags on the plane without you be we know you're not gonna be on it whatever we can't do that and i've got all these bags and they're the guy's like that bag's too big to go through, but you could like try. And I was like, Oh, it's a carry on. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I was, I needed to check like two bags. So I went through with four bags to, through the TSA thing. They didn't say a peep to me. I wow. just got through. And then I knew 
as I, my my thing was like, I think these people don't give a fuck how many bags I have. Like, you really don't, you really don't see a person that cares how many bags you have until it's too late. You're already getting on the plane. At that point, they're just like, oh, we'll just check it at the right. They have to thing. They don't care. Point. They're not going to stop you from getting on the plane. But my one thing, I was like, one thing that's going to get me killed. I have all my toothpaste and all that stuff. That's I have like two huge bottles of it, and they're going to open my bags. So it'll be a whole thing. Everything I had just went right through. No problem. I had like no yeah. problem, and I was like. That's not good. Dude, there's sometimes you, I'll forget like a, a water bottle or a sunscreen. It gets through like an alarming amount of Almost. Time. Yeah, that was the other thing. I had like two bottles of sunscreen in there. This big. They got right through. No problem. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, I don't love seeing <laughs> yeah, that. It's not the. It's not a great feeling. No. But yeah, Frankie and I had the old, we're not going to see a complain about going from Pebble Beach to Myrtle Beach. No. But if we were, we would tell everyone that we had a 5.13 a.m. flight out of Monterey this morning, which is a grind. And then a three hour layover in Dallas. And then got here at Myrtle Beach. Now here we are doing this pod, but excited to I actually be here. I feel pretty good. Of all like the bad travel days, I actually feel all right. I think it's just because I actually got a decent amount of sleep last night. Um, we can get into the dad bod classic. I know Danny doesn't. It's a sore subject. I actually enjoy hearing about it. It's yeah, like, it's you know, it's like when your truth. grandfather would tell you stories as a child of the <laughs> old country. You know, you just you like well, hearing about it. Well, Trent Daddy, <laughs> Trent Daddy was on the dad bod classic as well, but he's not here. Um, he decided to take a late night flight. Or, I'm sorry, uh, an early morning flight out of San Francisco that gets him here at midnight tonight instead of just taking the flight that we were taking. And so he's not going to do it on the podcast. So we had Alex Bush um, tell him that we're going to record this podcast when he lands because clearly this was all a move by Trent to just have his own day today. So we wanted to try and kind of get under his skin where it's like, hey, right when you land at one o'clock in the morning after coming from the West Coast, we're going to do the pod tonight. And he is not taking it very well. He wrote, ha ha, sounds good. <laughs> that's, not, that's not a Trent response. Nope. Yeah, he's not serious with that. No, he can't be. He no, uh, he, I think he's maybe sniffing it out. Yeah, I think he sniffed he it He realizes out. or that means fuck off. Well, he knows we're all together. <laughs> I think he sniffs it out. He's smart. He's Alex texts him and goes, hey, Trent, so we're going to do like 30 now, and then we'll have you, Frankie, and Riggs talk dad about right when you get in. Just let us know your timing. He goes, I mean, it's going to be after midnight. And Alex goes, yeah, all good. We're just going to grind it out. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, ha ha, all right, sounds good. Keep in mind, it's 7 p.m. now. So yeah, that would right. be like in six hours we're yeah. going to record this podcast. He hasn't gone on the plane yet, right? No, he's, he's up in the air. Oh, yeah. he's in the air. But he's got to be. Oh, maybe he's, he's got to be uh, transferring at some point. Yeah. He's there's got, no way you're going from San Francisco to Myrtle Beach. It can't direct. be an option. There just can't be an no, option. He's got to be going to Atlanta and then here probably. I like that he just uh, he just did what everybody wanted to do and just optioned the podcast today. <laughs> that's my that's the thing that's driving me crazy. Cancel the podcast. <laughs> I, I would have loved to just do, have not done the podcast today, but we're here for you people. We're here. We're here. Do uh, we tell him we're fucking with him? Or no, do we let, let it go? Him no, no. It out. You okay. got to let him sway it yeah, out. Yeah. That's like the rules of missing the pod. Something's got to happen. He's got to be stressing on that plane, too. Like, these fucking guys are really going to... I'm not doing a fucking podcast. Yeah, he just was like, I'm not doing it tomorrow. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was like, all right, we'll see you when you get, when you get there. We're going to do it. <laughs> get in on the golf action with DraftKings Sportsbook, one of America's top-rated sportsbook apps. New customers who deposit $5 or more could get a no-sweat bet up to $1,000 back in a bonus bet similar to a mulligan. We love DraftKings. DraftKings gets the action going, I believe, this week on Wednesday. Kirk Minhan and myself will be firing back up the golf gambling show that we don't oh, have. Oh, very nice. Yet. Um, we'll obviously be doing that with DraftKings. Next week is the Players' Championship. This week is Bay Hill. So there's a lot of fun stuff to get involved in. That's so. great. Uh, shout out to Mr. Ice. He got back on the board. He's back. He's back. We were on a little bit of a dry spell there, but he cares is what he said. He says, if you don't think he cares, he cares. And that was the that was the, uh, the whole takeaway from that last game. It's just nice. It's just nice to have a little bit of something on there um, and just ride with Mr. Ice, man. It's been really, really fun. It's one of the it's one of the. My most fun rides that I've been on. I am. Uh, I'm just one of the guys that he tags in all of his tweets. It's hilarious. That's and nice. S- and so I get, I just notice when something yes. big goes on because I get just endless notifications. Like a tweet that you were tagged in did this, 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 this. And I saw last night, he cares. We're back, which is huge. So DraftKings Sportsbook. Um, we love DraftKings. Hashtag DK partner. Yep. I won't be, uh, you know, I'm. I don't know when I'm going to do it, but I will be placing a wager on the New York Rangers to win the Stanley Cup. I yep. always hedge your happiness. I always do a, protection. I always do a little hedge my happiness. I've done it for the last four years, um, or the last four years that the Rangers made the playoffs. I think three years ago they didn't because they they did stunk. Um, that's what I'll be doing. Are they are they a threat this year? Is it? Are Unfortunately, they, yeah. 
unfortunately. They are a threat this year. Islanders are charging, though. We're charging. It's a good road trip, right? 3-0 and on the road trip. Got the Blues tomorrow. It's exciting, but hashtag DK partner. That's something I will be doing in the near future, and I probably have to wait for I need a couple losses maybe mm-hmm. just to get that. Because mm-hmm. right now they're like the favorite, and you don't want that. No. But even so, this far out, it's pretty damn good odds. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use code FOREPLAY, F-O-R-E-P-L-A-Y. Uh, new customers can get a no-sweat bet up to $1,000 if your first bet loses. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code FOREPLAY. The crown is yours. Trent Daddy played great at the at the um, Dabog Classic. So how does it work? Is it is it two like there's two, two teams. teams? It's Ryder Cup. Two teams. It's and the greatest golf tournament you could possibly. Play. <laughs> it I mean, really shout is. out to Josh Isner, right? That's yep. just like the that's our Lord and Savior. Do you find out what team you're on when you're there? How does it work? No, no. Rick's has a team and Josh has a team. Yep. Uh And they're teams for life. So there's Team Jisner, Team Riggs. We're now up four two all time. We're on a three year in a row winning streak. We're a dynasty. Yeah. We're a legitimate yeah. dynasty at this point. And we got higher vibes. Like the second that we roll up to every team, we got music, we got drinks, we got positivity. <laughs> Their team's grinding. They're just like not speaking to each other really. And we just bring it. And it's like the, the European wins. and American rider. You're, you're the European team. They even admitted that themselves yesterday. They're like, you guys are kind of a lot more like the European team. You guys we are a lot more fun. Have a fantastic time out there. So we've won three in a row. Um, They've got some players, though. It's like odd that we keep. I mean, it's obviously a str- like there's strokes involved in the whole entire event. So it is somewhat fair. But you've got guys like Mahoney who won the Barstool Classic Championship with isner yeah and they're both on the same team like that's two guys that have plus handicaps that i don't care if they're given 20 usually they're going to win those matches so right trent plays like do they do it where like the better players play against the better players or will trent be no it's totally blind draw blind draw totally blind draw so each night at dinner uh i set my lineup isner sets his lineup you know we all we do a big team huddle that's like that's like half the fun we do a team huddle we kind of talk about who's going to play with who and credit to our team i texted i sent two or three texts out like three weeks ago. So I sent one to like Frankie, one to like my brother, I think one to Todd Martin being like, hey, you got any preferences of who you want to play with? All three of them responded like, I'm happily play with anyone on the team. That's the mark of a good team. So I stopped even asking anybody and was like, anybody will just play with anybody. And so we've done it at this point. I try to get even new pairings. Like I don't even, there's some like old reliables that you go to here and there, but we try to just do new pairings a lot even because everybody can play with anybody. And we just roll. We had a, we were up, uh, three two after day one, and then we won like by two or three points on the second round, and then I think we tied like five five in singles yesterday. So we ended up we ended up getting the win pretty convincingly. Uh, it's an insane trip. We played the preserve on Friday, uh, which is a fancy land place. Unfortunately, we got rained on again. Um, Dude, the preserve is so big, and I think I have this right: is that you can fit Boston. LA and New York City all inside of the land that's at the preserve. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. The whole city? Yes. The preserve oh. is e- New Los, York. Los Angeles is a big city. Maybe it wasn't LA. It was it was New York, Boston, and one other other city. And I'm so the, so well, maybe it was San Fran. Maybe so it was San Fran. In addition to the golf course, they just have like they own, I mean like, you're on top of a mountain. Land. The you're most looking land out and, ever. It's like being on top of protected. like a mountain in Colorado and looking out. It's just it's all its land. And how far is it from So it's a forty minute drive. You drive about fifteen minutes or so and you get to the gate and you still have a twenty five minute drive to inside the of the preserve to get to the golf course. Twenty five no, minutes uh, up the up the mountain. Do you st- are there like rooms up there? People can stay there? It's houses. Mm-hmm. Like no, people one... have like insane homes on the side of these mountains, but not that many of them. So like yeah. you'll be driving for like ten minutes up this ridiculous it felt like you were kind of I felt like I was back in Positano or like in Europe where you're like driving up these no guardrail roads. I'm talking no guardrails and stuff. Bro, I, I Trent almost had a fucking heart attack. Todd Martin, the head of uh, Peter Millar on the golf side, who's like our Lord and Savior when it comes to like all the stuff that we do at Peter Millar. He was driving this thing and we all we stopped in the middle of the road at one point to just be like, all right, like this is unsafe. So you guys had never done the preserve as part I've of the never before? No, no, because we had done we had usually done this is look at this yeah, especially in the rain. That's dicey. Bro, yeah, it is. There's like there's no guardrail. It's quite pretty though. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. No guardrail. That's scary. It is uh it is the most Jurassic Park looking place. Yeah, I feel like that gets used quite frequently. Mm-hmm. 
it's wild. You don't, you can't like uh, smoke anything, smoke a cigar, or cigarette, and you're not allowed. Yeah, because, because of fire. Yeah. yeah. So you're not allowed to on the entire property. Uh, there's zero cell phone service from the second that you tee off until you're done. Like zero. It's crazy. And you're just out in this these crazy mountains. It's really, really cool. Uh, it's a bit of a trek up there, like we said. Then we played Saturday morning and the Well, you wanna know how elite the people out there are, by the way? How elite when they um when it's too foggy. How elite are they? When it's too foggy at Monterey Peninsula, they just go to the preserve to get above the fog. Yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. As one fog, does. They have a fog golf course. Yes, as one does. <laughs> now, think about that being like so they're all members of both, basically. Well, like if, if you are, right? Yeah, like, yeah. Like, all right, like let's play, let's play this morning, and then someone checks the weather, and like it's gonna be a bit too foggy. Let's go above the clouds. Yeah, that's how high it is. It's above the clouds, and we'll just we'll just avoid all that today, and we'll a play fog the golf. Yeah. yeah, yeah, just a fall, a contingency fog, plan, a fog fallback. So we had, and then we we do this opening dinner Thursday night. We set the matchups. Everybody gets all hyped up. Play Friday. We have another nice dinner Friday. Set the lineups for Saturday. Saturday, the forecast was the worst. That it was supposed to be, and of course, like we were playing our Pebble Beach round. Yeah. On Saturday morning, we had tea times from like eight thirty to nine thirty a.m., and it was supposed to be it was like eighty percent chance of rain all day. And it was supposed to just rain the entire day, and we got the luckiest. We had the Didn't nicest day. It was sunny out. It was like fifty five, sixty degrees. Oh. It was absolutely first perfect two holes. Outside. It was like nice, and you're like, "There's no way this is gonna stay like this." And I went birdie par i'm like i'm one under and then all of a sudden birdie one birdied one put it to put it to legit five inches almost Sick. hold out um how good is this start yeah. two par three chipping birdie so i'm two under through three I'm where'd you drive at, it on three three i hit like a hybrid just over the bunker and then i fairway though yep fairway yeah. and then i missed the green short with an eight iron and then just chipped in like simply just chipped in Sick. it was unreal simply <laughs> Simply yeah. the best. On the really fourth tee box, on the fourth tee box, when I tell you like the Dementors came from Harry Potter, the whole place got pitch black, and yeah. I was in the middle of the fairway with a fucking fifty-four degree in my hand. I'm like, I'm gonna go three under through four, and rain started coming sideways. Where we all ran to our bags and put on rain gear. So I was over the ball, and then I ran to my bag, got rain gear, put on two new gloves. That's how much it was dumping. It was like someone was pouring rain buckets <laughs> over your head, and I fucking I chunked the shit out of my wedge and ended up making a bogey and i like looked around I'm like that just ruined my whole day like, yeah. i know it did yeah you flew a little too close to the sun oh then five i made a bogey i missed the putt so now i'm like one under through four or five six i made a birdie so i'm just like all right i've made three birdies in the first six holes and then the seventh hole came and i've been lucky enough to play pebble beach it's actually embarrassing to talk about how many times we played pebble beach it was always a dream it was the background on my fucking computers it's the background on my phone someone painted me um tim smith shout out tim smith so art on painting. instagram he painted me uh the seventh hole the way that i sent it to him a picture that i wanted it's in my house it's in the guest room it's my favorite hole in the world the seventh hole pebble beach it's the video game hole it's jersey jerry's hole it's it's iconic and i was oh for five going into it i've never hit the green i've chunked it four times i pushed it left one no I chunked it three times legit off didn't even reach the forward tees three times and then one time, my first time ever, I bladed into the ocean. And then one time with my dad, I pushed it left <laughs> into the bunker. So I was I was ready to rock. Bladed into the ocean. Three birdies going into this, by the way. And I had a 54 degree, little wind in the face. So it was playing a smooth, just 100 swing. You love that that's, shot, That's too. the that's stock, dream. stock gets. Yeah. dream. Because my 54 goes 105. Yeah, it's perfect. And uh, I just thought about just getting it in the air because the last few times I've chunked it and I didn't even account for the right to left wind like Jersey Jerry was in the hole in one challenge where he just wasn't paying attention to the 12 mile an hour wind right to left and every <laughs> ball was ending up left of the green. I literally did that. I aimed at the stick and I hit it up in the air and immediately it just fell to the left and went over the bunker pin high just right there. I mean, I'm talking I was 15 feet from the pin like it was it was a great shot. Didn't hit the grass. Didn't hit the green. So that, that was a tough one. I'm over six. It's disgusting. It's an embarrassment of riches. The fact that we get to go out there. Thank you to Josh. It's the greatest fucking golf tournament of all time. The fact that he's put this together is insane. We are winners. It's great. Like we walk away with like, like, like Josh, like brings us out there. And then like, we just like beat him. It's like, sorry. Yeah, you feel kind of bad. You're like, thank you it's for getting this ridiculous. trip. I mean, he, there was some chatter about if we should like not you win. Don't accept it. Yeah. If he wow. said, he, he sets up the whole thing, right? What an end. Wow. Is right. Luke Hi, Kwan, Luke Kwan. Has, has entered the podcast realm. What's up, fellas? How are we doing, Kwan? What's up? Oh, what's up, guys? Uh, 
Let's set up here. How yeah, are you it's doing? getting a little hot and spicy. Doing all right. Here. I heard yeah. you guys just came back from Pebble Beach. Yes, yeah, sir. We're just kind of just recapping the weekend. This trip that they go on every year that they don't invite me to. Every is year. Unbelievable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Dad bod classic. You got the body. <laughs> you don't have called. a dad bod. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got some tits in a fucking bag. <laughs> yeah, we got some dad bod characters. It's more of like, a, it's a scary dad bod. It's like you can still see the ribs, but you got the tits there. It's not good. Brandon was telling me that you, it's apparently like some golf sugar daddy that just pays for well, yeah, basically pretty much i mean that's the best way to describe them <laughs> it's, it's the craziest golf trip anyone could ever get invited to and the fact that he puts it on is honestly it's admirable give him the run what is the rundown give him the rundown. it would just be it's essentially like everyone's kind of got not everybody people that do like a buddy's golf trip every year they got their guy that kind of plans it our guy just happens to have like more money than god <laughs> In his favorite place. He's like really cool and loves the boys. In his favorite place to go is Pebble Beach. So he's like, I'm not going to do a trip like, <laughs> yeah. anywhere else. That's just where yeah. we're going to go. So we get there. The we get the Spani- the Inn of Spanish Bay. <laughs> yep. And he he, hooked every, he puts everyone up at the Inn of Spanish Bay. And we're talking like 22 to 26 people. Like he even has people that come that don't golf. <laughs> that many people? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dude, it's nice. We have non-playing members. Non-playing members. So then we play the Preserve, which is like maybe the most exclusive <laughs> club out there. Then you play Pebble Beach. And then we play uh, Spanish Bay. Sometimes he throws in Spyglass, but it's all just like tea times are ready. Everything's done. Pebble Beach for 20 people is no joke. How much do you pay for the trip? How, what? How much do you guys pay for the trip? We're not going to disclose any information, but. Well, it's not that big a number. It's zero. No, but the you know, money goes towards like the winners and stuff. But yeah, it's really nothing. We actually t- <laughs> <laughs> we actually technically like. Cause we're not going to disclose that number. Me and Frankie both won some. We both won skits. We made money on the trip. Oh, yeah. No, we I, legit like made plus, plus 250. It was a made? profitable weekend. Yeah, we like made money. We both won Listen, some skits. This guy has a love for golf. He has a love for buddies trips. And he's he's been fortunate enough to legit be able to do whatever the hell he wants. I mean, wants. that's sick. It yeah, is sick. And, and he's he like, what, what is he, 37, 38? He's, yeah, he's one of the most impressive Whoa. people in the country, I would yeah. say, at this point. He's the man. He's so you great. guys have been to Pebble several times now. Yeah, I just Frankie got done saying I'm 0 for 6 on the 7th green of hitting hitting the green in regulation. <laughs> I've never hit the green. It's my favorite hole in the world. I have to say I did birdie 7 and 11. You stuffed this it trip. close. I hit it to like uh, 15 feet and made it. Ooh, it's pretty solid. It felt great. It's it pretty felt solid. Great. You uh, just got back from an insane trip. New Zealand? Oh, New Zealand. Yeah, I was trying to figure out where it was. Yeah, New Zealand. Wow. Yeah. New but you used to live cool. there, right? Yeah, I used to, I grew up there as a kid. Uh, not many people know that. If anyone's watching, that's New Zealand. Um, I grew up in two years in Whangarei, New Zealand, and then is that North Island, South Island? North Island. It's like north of Auckland. The hell did you say, Whangarei? Whangarei. Whangarei. That's nice. <laughs> is that the <laughs> I, what tongue is that? Is that? Well, I think it's a Maori word. Maori. Got but it. and then uh, I guess four other years in in Auckland. So more mostly in Auckland. So you would say you're you're a Kiwi. I don't really know what I am. You don't sound <laughs> Kiwi. Yeah, exactly. I don't sound Kiwi. Like, I wish I stayed there for longer so I didn't have the stupid peer pressure when I was, what was I, eight when I came to the U.S.? I wish I still had it. But Did you have it when you were eight? Like, yeah. yeah. yeah like, I came to the U.S. and, like, people didn't know what the heck I was saying. I was like, oh. Maybe oh I should have yeah, had, had to power through that. It's like I should have, yeah. The best. Um, I should have. Where was that place that you, you hit the ball like, on top of the world? Oh, that was a special thing where uh, one of the guys that I know in New Zealand reached out to that company, like over the top. I think it's over the top golf. If you guys want to check it out, um, they you have to ride a helicopter to go up to this this hole Did you see this? on a yeah, mountain. Yeah, it was outrageous. And uh, they have like several tee boxes. The unfortunate part is the green is rock hard. <laughs> the ball just bounces. <laughs> I mean, bounces. And guess where the flag is. Right where? Right it's in the, the front. front. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so it's like, how do you even get close to this how thing? How long is it? The whole? Well, the back, uh, I guess, tee box is like, raw numbers maybe like 330 or 340, but it's like so downhill, it plays like 270. Okay. But again, the green's rock, rock. hard, so there's no point less. in it. Yeah. You were so high. You got to take a helicopter. Yeah, 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 yeah. I would think it'd be 330 playing 90. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like we went yeah. up to like the front tees. Well, you hit an iron, didn't you? Yeah, well, that, yes. That was up at the front tees. Okay. The front tees. Yeah. So that one's a little bit more doable. And then there's also like a, there's like a big old rock on the left side. And there's like this tiny sliver. And I guess it's called a keyhole or whatever. I guess, I don't know if it's John Key or whatever related, but you're trying to like hit a shot like through that little sliver in a rock and I was able to do it which is pretty cool but yeah um it's sick it's just so like it's so cool to be up I don't know have you guys been in a helicopter yeah I actually almost puked in a helicopter I'm, in Portnoy once. I'm anti-helicopter Dave looked me in the eyes After and Kobe. said if you puke yeah. in here you're fired oh, 
Oh man. Yeah, yeah. I mean not to get heavy out here, but yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, I, it's like a real one from us. No, that's, I thought of the same thing. <laughs> yes. yes, that is a real one. That's oh so yeah, scarring that that could happen. Well, like, that can happen to Kobe Bryant. That could easily that, happen to me. That was yeah. one of the most bizarre experience. I was at I was at Tory Pines that day. Oh, yeah. Remember when he died and like Tiger kind of found out during the round? Mm-hmm. Yep. And like I remember word started trickling through the whole property that Kobe died, and everyone was like, oh, "No, he didn't." My, yeah. It was just one of those no like you remember it. exactly where you were moments. That was the oh, we've talked about it in this show quite a bit, but that was probably the most stunning yeah. and hard hitting like yeah. celebrity and the world death, ended like, like pretty soon after that with COVID right? yeah, <laughs> yeah that's that's right. that was in that was February bizarre month that was like February of 20 I'd have a that after. morning of that helicopter ride up to the Queenstown thing um, they were like oh yeah we, we gotta delay it because the clouds are a little low or something like that I was like good, good. yeah, yeah good great risk. call I know what that means <laughs> yeah great call <laughs> yeah. that's what we wanted to hear yeah. um, for anyone that lives under a rock and you and you don't know what the hell's going on, Luke Kwan has joined the show. He's the reason we lost a good good match. Um, his <laughs> chip in such an was ass. Oh yeah, <laughs> out of control. Such the video is so head. funny. We're standing on the green. At that point, the match mm-hmm. was what all square. Maybe, Maybe we, we were all were, square. We might have been one up. We and I been feel like up. we had some momentum, and it was like the only thing they could flip this is if he chips. You it. guys were playing unbelievable. Out of our minds. Unbelievable. unbelievable. We didn't miss. Yes. yes. We, we never play like We're that. the one shot wonders, though. Like, <laughs> we always just have one guy step up. Obviously, Dan is huge for that. We have shots that we never really were able to to, to come close to. Trent made a, like a long eagle putter. Trent made yep. a huge on one. On that par four, yeah. yeah. Yep. And uh, we're on the green, and we're just all talking to each other, being like, the only thing he can't do is make this. And then we have it, and he fucking made <laughs> and it. He, and he went last, too. There four guys just went before. a floppy, <laughs> like, short-sided pin. Dude, like, off it checked. And just, oh, I off, I like, something tight, perfectly. too. So, yeah, serious player. Um, yeah, you've been doing some good shit, man. I, I really like your shit. Instagram where you have like, I feel like a lot of guys try and find like an aesthetic to their videos where it's like, sometimes you like, will have a certain saturation or maybe a filter and you have like your own right now, which is pretty cool. Like I noticed like a lot of your drone work and a lot of your filming mm. has like its own little filter to it where it's like, you know, it's a Luke Kwan video. I, th- I think it's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, no, it's good stuff. I mean, I, I used to like be way more anal with what I post on Instagram, but then I realized just you're being a loser. Just, just post whatever. <laughs> yeah. And so I don't know. I just try to post like some cool, cool golf stuff just here and there. It's definitely different. I like it. This mm. New Zealand trip. How long were you down there for? Uh, it was about two weeks, like a little bit on the longer side of things. Every time I looked on my Instagram, you were just still there. You got to make a trip. <laughs> you have to make a trip to place. there worth it, right? Because the fucking yes. how long does it take you to get there? Well, it's I think it's like a fifteen hour direct flight from from Dallas. Honestly, direct to Auckland. Direct. Yes. Oh, that's that's nice. That yes. makes it easier. I, think, I mean, we flew fifteen hours today. Yeah, just not, <laughs> yeah, not, from, not direct. Just not direct. Indirect. Yeah. Huh? From, well, we went from Monterey to Dallas and then had a three hour layover and then we went from Dallas to here. It was like it was out of control. No, there's no way it's fifteen hours. Yeah, I don't it doesn't there's quite no way. All right, well, I left it my feels hotel. Like 15 hours. I, I left my hotel at three o'clock in the morning and I got here at what? Just now. Yeah. So you yeah, do but, the math. Yeah, but time zone difference and all that. Anyways. I know it's a fifteen hour flight because I had I, I flew we went to Melbourne for the President's Cup like yeah. five years ago. Yeah. And I stopped by New Zealand for like two days on the way home to play yeah. Terridi. Kari Cliffs. That's right. I forgot you did that. And one other spot. Uh, North and Island. then it was like, no, it was a little Allison McKenzie course, like near Auckland. Oh, oh, tar, uh, Tapo. No, 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 no. It was, uh, oh my God. Titty Rangi. It was awesome. Yeah, yeah. And some members had like invited me out there. So we had a great day there. Had yeah. some drinks and hung out. Anyways, and then on the way home, I remember because it was like the day before Christmas. And I remember we got on the plane. And they're like, yeah, unfortunately, our Wi Fi is down. So you're not going to have access to that, this flight. Oh, so no. I was like, Wait a second. Oh, on the <laughs> flight. Literally for the next 15 hours, oh, just darkness. Yeah, that's, that's illegal. Oh, it was insane. Those flights should be free. Oh, those, it was, those seats should be free. All those maintenance work that they, do, that they do on the planes, they should be doing it on the Wi-Fi as yeah, well. Yeah, Dude, the fact that, that they is, have no internet connections kind of cool. Yeah, People yeah. were all looking around like, is it, are they fucking serious? Yeah. <laughs> like, no internet for 15 hours? Yeah. So I know it's a 15-hour flight. But uh, so you played. So Terra ED, when I was there, it was just the one private course. Did now, you get to film it? No. Okay. I was going to say, because they are, it's pretty hard to get, yeah, be able to film it out there. Yeah. Yeah. I was able to get approval to film like a one hole thing. Mm, that yeah, was it. Yeah. I did like a one hole challenge. Better than nothing. Yeah. yeah. It was beautiful out. But now they've got a bunch of courses, don't they? They got, they're yeah. So they have, I, I guess it's called sister courses. I'm not really sure. But so Tari ED is the one that you played. It's the one that's, I don't know, it's like really high on the world ranking, which that's a whole nother thing on itself. But like they have a uh, um, TRI. Uh, which they have two courses so i think they have a north course and a south course terrari um my friend has played all terrari's and tar on his 
I mean, they're all just really good. <laughs> yeah. So, horrible, yeah. Horrible. I just feel like Tar 80 just has like the world renowned like name. It's like more re- recognizable, yeah. but. No, it was like the coolest place I've ever been, I think, yeah. playing golf there. Did you go to Queenstown down no, in the South Island? I didn't have time. Is it's that where Jack's of, Point is? Jack's Point, yes. Yeah. It's one of my, I might say it's one of my, it's, it's my favorite place on earth. Wow. Like, it is honestly sometimes so beautiful it doesn't even look real sometimes yeah new zealand gets like very lord of the ringsy like <laughs> hard to believe how beautiful it is yep. game of thrones status yep you don't I mean, maybe you don't necessarily think of it like as dramatic a landscape as like a iceland but it to- it's like there's fjords and there's south there's island everything. south yeah. island definitely gets pretty like mountainous and and just I, I think if you want to go to new zealand just to like see the beauty of new zealand it's more like queenstown go to the south island you can basically skip the North Island, I Let's think. Let's go to Queenstown. Yeah, y'all y'all seriously, you know, seriously should. Yeah. Listen, I'll go see I feel like again. Mac goes there too. Boucher yes, was down there for does. a while. Yeah, he does. We got to get this. You know where we got to go? And Todd Martin was telling us this. South Africa. We've got to go too. Really? I keep getting comments. On, I keep getting comments that I should go to South Africa. It's like beautiful courses. You might when get Trevor your, you Elman might, was born there, right? Like you might Cape get Town? your you might get your wallet stolen, but beautiful courses. Dude, yeah. <laughs> yeah, is it pretty? Todd Martin. Nice was, Todd Mar- Mar- there's I definitely parts. Of South Africa is like the murder capital of the world. Okay. Didn't you go for <laughs> yeah. your honeymoon? All right, not South Africa. We went okay. to East Africa. East Africa. No, but South Africa. Yeah, there's like Johannesburg is definitely. I mean, I'm sure these golf resorts are mm. removed, but mm. they're definitely in the cities there. It's dicey. Mm. Is Oscar Pistorius he South Africa guy? I don't know if he's out. There's so many. Is he out yet? I think he's out now. He did a really bad thing. Yeah, he shot, I mean, he shot his girlfriend. Yeah. yeah. Can't and he's not, out? Yeah. Through a door. You didn't hear this story? You he's know, a the Blade Runner. The guy who was like running with no legs and he uh-huh. like set all these records. Yeah. Is that ringing a bell or no? Yeah. Not really. It doesn't but, seem like but it's ringing Continue, a bell. continue. Anyway, so he was like very famous. He was the fastest blade. They called him a Blade Runner because he had no legs. He was a prosthetic and he would run on blades. Kind of an unreal look. He had like these murdered so out like, like blades. You know what the blades look like? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had a great, yeah. he had a great brand. Yeah. He had a great brand. Blade Runner. And then, <laughs> yeah, it's an incredible, it's incredible brand. brand. Good movie too. And then yeah, basically he got into an argument with his girlfriend and shot her through a door Oof. and she died. That's And good. he claimed that he thought it was an intruder. And so there was this whole case and he lost the case. Yeah, that was the whole trial. But then I think he yeah, but recently he's, like but got he's, out. He got out. Well, it wasn't he wasn't in jail for that long. Yeah, because I think what? I think he didn't win the trial in terms of like innocence, but he didn't get like the he full, didn't get nothing. He got whatever oh, I I don't know, I third see. degree murder or something, whatever the hell it was, which is still horrible. But uh <laughs> it's only third degree. Anyways, long story short, I think he's South Africa. <laughs> to close the loop, he's from that country. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. A lot of us spend our lives wishing we had more time. The question is, time for what? If time was unlimited, how would you use it? The best way to squeeze that special thing into your schedule is to know what's important to you and to make it a priority. uh, Therapy can help you find what matters to you so you could do more of it. We focus a lot on bodies, on our golf games, on this, that. Don't focus enough on your brains and your mental health. There's a lot of talk about chipping yips and 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 things that happen within the game of golf where you take it very seriously but everything off the golf course you need to make sure you're, you have that same amount of attention for your brain and the way that you're processing everything you know life is not easy and there's ups and downs and there's people that are literally paid and they are they are incredible at their jobs at knowing how to navigate your problems in your life and that's what better help does there's uh full swing which comes out this week there's a big big episode about therapy so therapy and golf is, is very very in vogue right now is that right uh-huh. well, i like to hear that um we're going to talk about full swing and we got to talk about anthony kim we got to talk about a bunch of other stuff on thursday's show um so a little teaser for people that that stuff's coming up uh on thursday but if you're thinking of starting therapy give better help a try um you just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist Switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash four today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash four. BetterHelp dot com slash four. I have a story about shooting through a door. I don't know if you ever heard of it, but it's going to change. It's going to change your perspective on life. I've told this on this story real quick. Um... This guy, one of my friends was a police officer on Long Island, showed up to this call and they learn about this thing that happened. And essentially this girl calls up and says that she found a bullet in her 
um, in one of her picture frames. And no one knows like where it came from. And all of a sudden they're looking through the house, this apartment building, and it, there was a hole that was next door. So this guy claims that he was cleaning off his gun and it went through and it went through the wall. And where this fucking picture frame is, is over her toilet and inside. So it's right over the toilet where your head would be. And it's a picture frame that says life's too short, travel the world. And right in the middle of the picture, the bullet was lodged into it. And if she was just, if she was just on her phone, just texting, would have went right through her forehead. Oh, but she happened boy. to just be like not in the house that day. And this guy. Does she wow. believe that it was an accident? Well, like there's now that there's a huge investigation. Like, was he trying to like kill himself and he moved or whatever? No one knows. But you can't just fire a live round regardless. Yeah. Well, it's just the last second. You're last just, like, second. I don't want to do it. Okay. Dodge right. it. But like, <laughs> yeah, was how rush. insane is that? That this. <laughs> that would be. So I, I kind of like skipped around the story. Like originally, like the guy shot through the wall and no one was home and he tried to like cover it up. He tried to like go over there and like and get maintenance and shit. So it was like shady first like 24 hours of this. And they like looked around the apartment to be like, what actually happened in here? Like, why is this guy being so weird? And they looked at the picture and there was a bullet right in the middle of a life's too short. Travel the world picture. <laughs> I said, you know how like art is sometimes like, you know, like an unconventional piece of art. I think you could sell that paint, that that drawing That's or whatever true, for like a million dollars. With the story, with the story. 100%. Yeah. Like yeah. some billionaires going to be like, I want to hang that in my office. And Such be a rich like, commentary on the fleetingness of life. Oh, yeah, it's just, right. <laughs> you, can, you yes. walk, so you walk yeah. one of your employees into your office and be like, life's too short. You, know, so you know what I mean? That's a fucking statement That's piece. That's crazy. Totally. kind of dark. Isn't that like, wild? Kind of dark. Yeah, it's a dark story. I hope he was just clean. Like Memento yeah. warning. I didn't expect all this on this podcast. We, no, Kobe. We don't really talk about Blade Runner. <laughs> we don't. We got people a lot of murder. A lot of shooting, death involved so far. Yeah. Shooting guns. Uh, Can we so, get into golf talk about like his journey? Yeah, like, I would love to get into that. I know, obviously, we first got to know you in December when we were down in the, in the Bahamas at Abaco. That was a great trip. Filming. Vibes were insanely high. We talked about it a ton on the trip. How did you get hooked up with the Good Good crew originally and kind of get into the content game? Uh, well, I, I had just lost status on Latin America tour and I just am just, I'm just fucked off by golf at that point. I'm like, dude, I don't know if I, I like, I've just lost status. I, even if I wanted to do Q school, it's not going to be for several months later. I've had this YouTube thing in my back pocket. So why don't we just go full bore into YouTube for a while? And I'm like, I'm just going to film with whoever. I don't care about the politics of beef between this group, that group. I don't care. I'm just going to film with whoever. Start filming with like this group called Regacy for a little while or actually one week. And then I get told that um, Gugu wants me for a trip in Branson, Missouri, Paynes Valley. Had you had you like spoken to those guys? You know them at all? I had known Garrett for a while. Like he actually, it's kind of weird. I I was actually doing YouTube in 2018, um, and late later that year I moved to New Zealand because I had you know had to move immigration status wise. Um, so I was in New Zealand, and Garrett hit me up and said like, "Let's go film a video." And he had just started YouTube. So he had like less f subscribers than I did with, for a little while. Like it was kind of weird saying that. <laughs> you had but that for yeah. a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So like you were at the top of the leaderboard. Yeah. There. It feels good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So like I'd I'd known Garrett for a while. Um, even like what was that two years before even Good Good even started. So what made you want to start a YouTube journey when you're like clearly in the thick of trying to become a professional? Yeah, you, you played collegially at Oklahoma. You were yeah. doing the like big time. Let's go be a pro golfer. Right. This is a long. How how much detail do you want in this? Yeah, you know. The right amount, all of it. The right enough, amount, enough to let us go to dinner after this. Podcast. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. All right. Well, I'll I mean, do, just, I'll it's do an it interesting quickly. story because Absolutely. like we have, we're all like in the same world now. The influencer golf, whatever right. you want to call it, right. and you have, you have. Oh my god! I almost just fucking puked on myself. I just stuck. <laughs> oh, so we're many coming times. out the hell of a week. Uh, you have four different people that have way different routes to becoming golf uh, yeah, you YouTubers, and and this is a very interesting way. I was a pizza guy. Uh, I never, you know, I just yeah. played high school golf and yeah. you like just learned the game like in your late, in your early twenties. Yeah. Like, just I mean, jumped in with my Dan brother. is a little bit more of a, I mean, you're probably the closest to him in terms not of. Not close at all. I didn't play college golf. Okay. No, not at all. Like everything. I do have like, yeah. This is like in Lost when they go back through in yeah. season two and three and like everybody's backstory and how they yeah, ended yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> origin story. So now we kidding. zoom yeah, in on the Luke. origin story. Yeah. Well, okay. I started YouTube golf for absolutely not this reason of playing matches with people and going traveling places. This was not the reason. I so I'll go back a bit. So actually, quite a lot. I was born in Korea. I left. We're going I, back all yeah, the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was born in Korea. I left when I was <laughs> two. Like, all right. Oh, so it's like. <laughs> 
Talk to us. One hundred years BC. I'll be quick. Yes. I'll be quick. I'll be quick. Uh, talk to us about the conception. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be quick. I, I left when I was two, and basically from two to eight, I was in New Zealand, and then I came to the U.S. So when I came to the U.S. when I was eight. So from eight to twenty-one for those thirteen years, when I got to the U.S. when I was eight, I applied for a green card, um, and for thirteen years I was waiting for that green card to come. Uh, turned twenty-one, that green card, that green card never comes for thirteen years. I am now. Um, Sorry, that green card application was under a dependency of my parents. And so once I'm 21, I'm not dependent on my parents mm. anymore. So that green card application is just out the window now at that point. And I switched over to a student visa, which basically at that point, you're just telling the government, I'm just here to study. When I had been in the U.S. for 13 years at the time. And then once I graduated, it's been like 16 years. They're like, this guy's really studying hard. <laughs> <laughs> this guy loves school. He's He's no. yeah. Just take the test. Right, brother, man. Man. Suck oh. school. brother, you should have <laughs> went to Mexico and ran across the world. <laughs> Making a thousand Honestly. bucks a month. Honestly. Way Honestly. easier. <laughs> couple coyotes. Come you on, dude. This, put you on a bus to New York, bro. No so, time. Uh, Come on. Free hotel then, room. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, so once I graduate college, you're basically given this thing called an OPT, which is like, you get one year. You don't even know even what I don't even know what OPT stands for. You just given one year to just figure your shit out. Like, what are you gonna do next, visa wise? And I was like, dude, um, I I'm seeing my friend go play like PJ for China. That's played on at OU, um, and he's like dominating. Like he's winning tournaments over and over again. I'm like, dude, I'm not saying he's a bad golfer, but like I just saw him in college all these years. Like I could do what he's doing. Like, yeah. what, what's going on? And uh, so you like, weren't like dying to be a tour pro when you were in college. No, I was. I was. Oh, okay. But like, I didn't have a whole lot of money. Um, I had the whole immigration problem because, like, yeah, I can go play PG Tour Canada or Latin America or China. Problem is, if I if I leave the U.S., I can't come back in. So right. I was kind of just stuck playing like mini tour stuff. So I was kind of like delayed because of that. And here I am sitting in a caddy shack in Dallas, like working as a four caddy. Like, dude, what am I doing? Like, I feel like I'm good enough to go play and at the time like my immigration status is running out i i guess i could get a corporate job but i was like i don't want to do that i want to actually there's a stupid nagging voice in my head saying like you're good enough to play pro golf even though my immigration status is running out i'm having to leave my family here soon i barely have any money to even play any tournaments and i'm watching this one guy um well i'll go back a little bit i i so i get like a i print out some brochures and i go to like house to house and i'm literally hanging these brochures on these houses of like my tournament resume and like i need some <laughs> oh, help like you right. know like investment opportunities like and i'm doing this shit i'm like no one's gonna fucking say yes why am i doing this <laughs> yeah you're like i wouldn't say door to door salesman about yeah. your golf game <laughs> yeah hey, i uh shot 68 last week you were you know, right, so what happened? i'm on the edge of my seat <laughs> and what so happened? i'm doing this i'm like this is fucking dumb no one's gonna do it but if uh, off chance one fucking person says yes it'd be worth it yeah i do it for like a couple weeks no one says yes i'm like this is fucking stupid <laughs> And I thought I wasted my time, but a few few weeks later, I'm like watching this like self improvement, self help guy on YouTube, and it's like the same format over and over again. But he's talking about obviously not golf. And I was like, I could just do the same thing that he's doing, but put like a golf twist on it, and maybe bring that traffic over from YouTube over to a website where now I can just do that same like brochure thing where I can be like, this is my investment opportunities, whatever. Like if you want to help mm. my golf career. Oh. And so I was doing that for a while, and I was like, you're telling me. The situation that you're in, you're having to leave your family and you think your fucking solution is YouTube. Like you are a fucking child. And I just, I could not believe that that's what I was about to do. But I was like, I actually think this might work. And uh, I was just like doing YouTube for a little bit. And uh, obviously no traction for the first few videos. Like <laughs> I was getting like 60 views and 30 of them were for my own self. Just watching it back. <laughs> um, and uh, I was doing it for a while. And then like one video popped off. Because I had like U.S. Open qualifier in the in the title, and then not, I didn't even think anything of it. But U.S. Open came around and started going off, and uh, amazing got, how that stuff yeah yeah oh, just out of coincidence. Matters. Interesting. Yeah yeah, and uh, I was I was telling myself if I can just get like five thousand subscribers before I leave to go to New Zealand, because I was at that point I was like looking for solutions around this whole immigration thing for a while. I was like, I can't find a way to like be able to play play pro golf. Like, I mean, yeah, I can go into the corporate world, but I don't want to do that. And so, like, I just couldn't find a way. I was like, you know what? I think maybe the reason why I can't find a solution is because this is what I'm supposed to do is just to fucking take a bet on myself, leave the country. And I was like, if I can just get 5,000 subscribers before I leave, I think I'll be in a good spot. So, like, I'll... So, a couple months go by and I'm about to go leave for New Zealand and I have, like, two investors that actually, you know, 
you know, it was down to help me out before I went to go to New Zealand. I think I had like 10,000 subscribers at the time. So it's like, holy shit, this actually might work. Um, and then long story short, yeah, I mean, like played well on PJ Tour China, won the fifth event. I think all I needed was like the top 10 on the money list on the season to get um, basically a professional athlete visa to come back to the U.S., so I think I finished my yeah I finished my season fifth on the money list, got corn fairy status, and through that corn fairy status I could get professional athlete visa and took a massive bet on myself and it worked. I mean you're a very humble guy because you like are in such detail about all like the like the struggle part of your life, and yeah. then now you just like skimmed over like you won the fifth <laughs> event, you're in the top five, like like you did it, you went there and yeah, you fucking yeah. did like. What was that like? Fucking winning the event. What was I like mean, playing a tour in China? Like, what was that crazy? You fucking won. Like, that's insane. <laughs> yeah, Dude, winning an event. It's is... like the end of the movie. You're just like, yeah, I won, but that was it. <laughs> <laughs> the the like, tour, uh, it was ran great. Honestly, where was the event? The signage. Uh, the event was at, at a place called Qinghuangdao, like fucking like East China somewhere. I don't even know where it was. Um, but the tour was great. I mean, courses. Honestly, the courses were great as well. Like they were like courses that were like so fucking tight off the tee that if you just kept your ball in play you were actually gaining strokes yeah <laughs> and uh it was it was great like it just it rewarded good ball striking out there which i liked and uh the only thing is food there is a bit dicey like yeah. dude the first five weeks of being in china i was peeing out of my ass the entire time oh, oh like, yeah it wasn't nothing was agreeing with you <laughs> nothing yeah yeah and so i was just like dude if i well for a while i was like if i can't read it i'm not gonna eat it even that wasn't working so i was like I'm just gonna have fucking McDonald's every day then. Yeah, there you go. lunch and dinner over and over again. I had McDonald's today. Dallas Fort Worth Airport. <laughs> it's, it's really it's Big Mac. It's, oh, yeah, it's great. It's, uh, I feel um, like McDonald's gets too much hate. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's pretty good. It's McDonald's for a reason. Yeah. American institution. Yeah. When you were going through the uh, college recruitment process, mm. obviously OU like sick program, all that. How, you must have been getting recruited everywhere. No, really, it was not. No, I was a I was a small fish. Okay. Um, Coach Hibble, the coach at OU honestly just kind of took a chance on me um i think he could tell that i just kind of really wanted it and i had the work ethic at the time and all that and so just honestly just took a chance really wow yeah and were you like was it not much of a decision for you you're like of course i'm just gonna go to well my first year i went to a school called st edwards down in ut or in austin ut uh it was a division two school actually and um it was because OU didn't offer me enough of a scholarship. And then I played well my second semester at St. Edwards. And then OU was like, do you want to come up to OU? And they offered the same scholarship. And this time I said yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 good uh, bargaining technique by them. That's great. <laughs> come back with the same offer. Yeah. That's great. Were you like, were you a committed grinder in golf? Oh, when, I was a, golf? when I was a junior golfer and I mean, yeah, gen- generally in amateur golf, like college golf as well, like just fucking grinded. Yeah. So like, what was the thing you worked on the most? Depends. I think probably, well, mostly <laughs> I was a fucking range rat mostly. Um, chipping in against us. That's what you were. Yeah. Practicing. But like for. in college, I think I worked on my short game a lot because partly I had the yips for like two weeks or two weeks, two years. Ooh. What do you mean? The what, chipping what? yips. Oh, really? Yeah. Like I, I could be from here to you from, to, from the green. I, could, I would either blade it or I wouldn't even make it to you. Like oh, I would chunk it that bad. He went through that, but now he's an unreal. Five chipper. years, yeah. Five years. But I also didn't really try and tackle it. Oh, like okay. I just but still five years. It became a lot like of my. Stars. It became like my persona. Like it was Frankie oh, Butter knives. No, they it called was your me. identity. It was my identity. Yeah, Literally, it, it, everywhere I went, everyone called me Frankie Butter knives. <laughs> Because I said if <laughs> literally a, a dude, wedge looked like a like a one iron, dude. Look, we were at this course in crazy, New York. Dude. We were in like Staten Island or something. We were in New York one time. This is like six years ago. Yeah, and we like weren't even really in YouTube yet. We were like we were doing the podcast. I don't think we were we, posting to YouTube. No, we weren't. And we like occasional videos go out, but not that much. But like it started. To, this was like maybe a year into like the Frankie Butter Knives thing, <laughs> and Frankie is like green side. And it was early in the year. It was like around Masters weekend or something. We were like, we got to get out and play some golf. So it was soaking wet out still. Yeah. And he's standing there. He's got this little like short-sided chip. And he's kind of standing. You know, and I can tell it's like in his head, whatever. And he hits this chip. It goes like an inch and a half. Yeah. And these guys from the fairway over, they just scream, ha ha, Frankie Butter <laughs> I, I turn around and go, fuck you. And like, echo the golf course. 
<laughs> it was a dark time. <laughs> That's when you knew you had Dude, to make a change. You had to I would change. not wish yips on anyone. It is, it is fucking I dark went to a psychiatrist. Times. I did a whole series about it. <laughs> it Dr. is actual Brett dark McCabe. times. He, he like taught me and it just released my fear. I had to just, I mean, it was that. And it was also just like legitimately hitting a thousand balls at, at our club. Yeah. I had a thousand balls in like a week and I just kept chipping until I figured out what the fuck it took <laughs> to get the ball in the air. I was chipping in at Pebble Beach. Yeah, yeah, I did chip in. So, so that, the know. thing is when you are when you're practicing, the yips aren't there. Yeah, I know. it's all about nerves. Yes, it's it's like so in your head. Yeah. Like, dude, so Dr. Brett McKay base it, and I th- I still don't think he came up with this line, Brendan. I think I came up with it and I'd love to trademark it one day. But he said, stop saying because I would always be like the fucking hey, where's the pizza? You guys, hey, I'm gonna make a joke. I'm gonna make a joke. Watch out for your kneecaps. Like I'm I'm about to chip. And I, and basically what he taught me was mm-hmm. Stop saying watch out and start saying watch this. And it was that little difference of Switch. like stop being the fucking jokester around the green mm. and actually be like watch how good I can get this thing over this bunker and let and have it land short. Yeah. Or maybe I can go attack this thing with a one hop stop. Like show someone some 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 skill. Show off a little bit. It's it, you turn it into less of a scary thing. You turn it into like an opportunity. Opportunity yeah. to show yeah. off. Yeah. And yeah, he's yeah, like yeah. that's where the best ability comes out. And yeah. it's like holy shit. So I I've never said watch out. Like I literally don't say that anymore. Like, I used to be like I used to clear the green. <laughs> and you're already setting yourself up for failure. Well, yeah, cuz you're saying in like into your own mind like you guys might be in trouble. I'm, I'm fucking blade looking it. at Brandon. Yeah. I'm saying, if you stand there, you're dead. Yeah. And now I've already put doubt in yes. everyone's mind, including yes. my own, of being like, when I make contact with this, someone might get hurt. And that's where it goes. Like, eh. there was a guy that I talked to. He was a, um, he was, I think, a caddy for Brendan Todd. Yeah. I don't know if you guys know Brendan Todd's yeah, yeah, like yeah. struggles. Oh, yeah, yep, he, With uh, his swing yips. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Really like, bad. Really bad. Um. His caddy was actually a guy with um, st- like a really bad stutter. And I think his other job it, right now, he's not a caddy for Brendan Tony anymore. He's like a, a firefighter and like does like the operate, like whatever the call operator is. Oh, wow. But he like stutters in dispatch. Dispatch. Yes. Nice. And he and he stutters in like regular day to day conversation. But when he's operating on that phone calls, like, you know, getting all the ca- calls for emergencies, he like doesn't stutter. So something about it locks him in in a good way. Yes. Yeah. And he was talking about how like the source of all the yip stuff is because of shame. Because if you are on a high pressure situation, like operating those calls in emergencies, if you mess up, it's okay. Like it's kind of understandable that you kind of mess up a little bit. But like on a regular ass conversation with like a fucking I don't know, grocery cashier or something and you, you mess it up, it's like, oh, this isn't even that hard of a thing to do and I'm fucking it up. Like there's all that shame like loophole going on. Yeah. And that was what he linked the yips to wow. because you probably felt like a lot of the shame of like i feel it too i feel it more on like the really easy chip shots like fucking for me to brendan over there like if i can't chip this close i look like a fucking idiot right because there's easy. an expectation that you can do it's whereas easy. if it's a hard shot it's yes. like if you if you hit it shitty it's like it's a hard shot and it's understandable it great, it's like oh that's a right. bonus and so like <laughs> targeting that shame like basically what you're saying as well yeah was kind of the source of like all these yip problems. Yeah, it is. When you think of it of it that way, better players are probably way more susceptible to the yips than just your average just guy who goes out on the weekends because you have so much more expectation expect- yeah. Yeah, and, and sh- so yeah. much more like, oh, I've done this before. Why can't I do it right now? And then once that doubt creeps in, yeah, and you know your potential. Rose. Wow, that's I mean, great. literally, Tiger Woods, maybe the greatest player yeah. who's ever lived, had couldn't he, chip for like yeah, two he had years, the yips like too. Yeah, full shout year. out to our guy Joey Lang. Um, Oh, what, why, why? Joey Langone? Langone. Langone. I don't know why I was going to say Joey Logano. I've been going to way too many NASCAR events. Joey <laughs> Langone stutters, and then when he drinks, he like speaks perfectly <laughs> fine. It's like unbelievable. <laughs> you ever notice that? Yeah. <laughs> we'll have like a company thing, and he just talks to you. I mean, he, he has a really bad stutter, and then we'll be out for like the company year-end meeting, and he just is like, yeah, let's just have a conversation Some for like the next juice. hour. That's yeah, crazy that's that western medicine hasn't <laughs> made a pill that mimics that impact that yeah, that's, that, that's he's true. not gonna like it. i almost called him joey Langano. Dude, i uh i fix my chipping yips by not even looking at the ball anymore wow like, like th- if that's my target i would go like this and just like hit no way and it would See, be was, clipped it, i've seen that with putting i don't was know if I've seen that doing that? i don't know no, he's he doing it putting, putting but i don't think he was doing it chipping no dude that's crazy you, you should maybe try it. it right well i do it sometimes as like a drill like just to like take my mind off of it how could that be better than looking at the no, ball? No, I'm That's telling you. Crazy. Well, first off, shame wise, 
if you fuck up that chip, who gives a fuck? You're not even looking at the ball anyways. There you go. So you're just you're just negging yourself, basically. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're just being like... I wasn't even trying. Then, yeah, like, then, I'll, 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 my foot's going to... If I, if yeah. I shoot 80 today, it's going to And then also, yeah. you're going to realize that, like, you can hit fucking behind the ball, and you're not going to chunk it if you don't fucking, like, lean into it. Yeah. Right. The fuck. Use the bounce That's a been... Bit. The, so I got a lesson from Parker McLaughlin, short game chef. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. was the biggest thing yeah. that he was teaching me about, like... Because there's this big trend right now in chipping to get like really yeah. steep and, and attack angle. Yeah, and down. like super down. And it's, it's like unless you practice golf every day, that's going to be really hard for like an amateur because your margin of error is just pretty much non-existent. Right. And then he was showing some videos about like Jason Day and Matt Kuchar and Steve Stricker. And like these guys will like sometimes bounce it in. Mm. But because they, you know, the toe is interacting the right way, the bounce is interacting the right way, you have that margin of error. There's different styles to it for sure. And it's yeah. also dependent on the lie that you get. As totally. Because well. like if it is kind of like soft, you're not going to be able to kind of sweep it. Like you, yeah. You'd rather just stab into it and do it the the Joseph Mayo track man. Yeah. Guy. Spin loft. Yeah. Spin loft. Are the guys that are coming in steep, are they using 60 degrees around the greens or are they yeah. using like yeah. 52? But it's 60 degree and they'd like hit these Launch incredible it like low spinners. 30 degrees. Are you a 60 degree, like every chip type of guy? Generally. And there's a reason why. Why? There's a nerdy reason why. Because. <laughs> Give it to Smash us. Factor. Every club has a smash factor. Smash factor is the relationship between um, ball speed and club speed. Your driver, if you hit it well, it's a smash factor of 1.5. So the, so the ball is going 1.5 the speed of your club head. If you want something, well, first of all, you would want your uh, chip shots and pitch shots to be as close as you can to like about one right. smash factor, meaning the club speed and the ball speed is about the same or right. is the same. Yeah, you don't want that like acceleration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If that was the best if, chipping tip I ever got was that... Because in golf, like we always kind of feel you with putting, everybody says it that like makes you accelerate through the ball. The mm. best tip I ever got from chipping was like make your whole motion almost Not try to home. be the same, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? The speed and med, whatever. Yeah. And so, like, whenever people like start using, like, for example, like a 56 degree, I'll still use, but like a 50 degree or a nine iron or a pitch or an eight iron, seven iron, it's like, those clubs have different smash factors. So they're going to come off hotter or not as hot. And so it's like, you might as well just get very comfortable with the smash factor of one or two clubs and know what that feels like then bring out like all these clubs that have different smash factors where they just come out shooting hotter and obviously lower loft and all that it's like makes a lot of sense yeah like right i just never really understood like people chipping with eight irons and seven irons like it's just right because that the conventional is like that's people try to tell you to do that more yeah, it's like often. get like, the ball, get it rolling get the ball rolling as quick as you can like okay, but to your sure. point it's like now people that already don't practice golf even mm. close to enough to be good, now they need to practice chipping More with clubs. five different clubs exactly. instead of just one where exactly. you're good at it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Cars.com is a leading digital marketplace that connects car shoppers with their perfect car. They've been celebrating 25 years of helping shoppers research, find inventory, finance, and sell cars up to 50,000 cars are added daily to cars.com. Shop over 2 million cars for 2 million uh, possibilities. Cars.com just been doing it for maybe the longest time that people have been doing the cars on the internet thing. Yeah, it's a whole new frontier. Cars have been around for a long time. And now the fact that you can shop them online, I mean, it's been forever at this point, 20 years. They're, they're grizzled veterans in this game, but it still feels very new where it's like you used to have to go there and shake the guy's hand, not get swindled. He was a scumbag. He was, was a scumbag. He was known as a scumbag. He was known as a scumbag. Used yeah. car salesman like, became a thing. It became a, a personality trait, and it's not a good one. And the fact that you get to just eliminate all of that stuff, check out exactly what you want, the color, the make, the trim, the infotainment system. Mm. Do, you want, uh, do you want a sun? a sunroof do you want a not a sunroof do you want black rims everything's right there all on a website beautifully beautifully crafted find your next possibility on cars.com uh up to fifty thousand cars added daily two million cars for two million possibilities cars an enormous part of your life of your family of your personality make sure you get the right one and shop with cars.com find your next possibility on cars.com where to next Uh, how do you now? I mean, I know you talked about in college, you were a grinder, you're obsessed, your work ethic with golf. Now, like, do you work on your game a lot still or no. are you okay? You're just yeah. focused on content. more. Yeah, basically. I don't know. I mean, I, so, there's some times where I like, I come back to Dallas and, uh, my golf clubs are just like in my travel case 
the entire time. And then I go off to another trip and it hadn't come out yet. <laughs> you just won't even take them out. I mean, sometimes I'll just, like go hit some balls like two or three days before the trip. So I don't just like fucking shanking on camera. Yeah, yeah. But other than that, like, nah, not really. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, are you in, uh, do you, have you always had like kind of a passion for videography or do you do? You... Oh, I didn't. I thought, dude, I thought, especially photography. I thought photography was the dumbest shit ever. Videography. Huh? How about now? I, I can see how it's cool. <laughs> I can see how it's cool. I still like Frankie said, you post some pretty artsy shit. I feel yeah, like. yeah. 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 Like the video stuff. I've always liked video ish, but like not to like extent where I know that's probably an FX 30 or FX three. It's got a full frame sensor and it's got what, a f- that's not a prime lens. That's a zoom lens. And like all these things with, on the Is video right? side of things. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like, know any of those things. Like, I never thought I would ner- I would go into such a deep rabbit hole like I did in 2018 when I was like starting to go into this YouTube stuff. I was like, fuck, like I know so much, like I, even to the point where like Colin and Max, the two editors at Good Good, mm-hmm. like I can have a general conversation, actually more than general conversation about the whole video side of things and video codecs and like stuff that I, I don't even know why I know that stuff, but I just like learned it over the years. Yeah. And it's good because it, it, there's so much out there. There's so much competition, whatever you want to call it. Mm. Um, you have to find a way to have your own like voice or whatever. Obviously, you've got the whole like, I want a fucking PGA Tour event, essentially, or PGA China event. Um, but I think the fact that you have this aesthetic to your videos is what's what's catching my eye. You hitting the ball close to the hole isn't what grabs me. It's like you're actually caring about the other shit too. Yeah, which was, I like. I, they, I've noticed it a lot recently. Right. There was a, I don't know who the fuck said it, but it's like, if you want to be the best golfer in the world, that's pretty fucking hard. Yeah. If you want to be the best, I don't know, lefty in the world, that's still pretty fucking hard, but it's easier than being the best golfer in the world. If you want to be the best golfer on YouTube, that's not going to be that hard. <laughs> if you want to be the best golfer on YouTube with like cinematic feel and this and that, like the more you like niche down, niche yourself, yeah, because yeah, then you own it. Yeah, because then then you have much less competition in that niche. Oh. So, so who do I have to go after for the lefty? Is it uh, Boucher? <laughs> yeah, Boucher. <laughs> Boucher. Yep. I wish Church up his name. Yeah, I don't it's know. It's hard. That it's a it's either. a hard name to say. Correctly. Yeah. Well, it's also he's like Canadian and almost has like a little French. Boucher. Boucher. Yeah. So you really like, should oh, be Mac Boucher. 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 It should be Boucher. Boucher. That's what Probably I think everyone is. assumes that it is. It's Matt um, Poisson. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. We should do a lefties competition. Ooh. Yeah. Bring all the all bring all the freaks. He's a, one of my favorite Cutsy. people to play golf with. Cuts. Oh, is he? J- Joey Cole. Yeah, Cuts. he just hits all the crazy. Oh, it's entertaining to watch how much he can move it. It's so fun. The cuts, I, like, I feel like it's like, I don't know. I feel like I can cut it a lot as well. But the hooks, I cannot believe how he can he can keep it in the, the hooks air. are out of control. The yeah, slings, he, he just slings it. Yeah, like I feel like whenever I try to hook it, it just falls out of the sky and fucking goes like half the distance. Yeah, it's a duck hook. It's yeah, yeah. It never <laughs> yeah. gets up there and he's hitting these high towers. Yeah, it just like stays stay up there. there. Like, how do you do that? And it's so, because we played the, I played the 100 hole hike with him. Uh, we did like this tailor made thing at Pebble at the so Hay. Just live at fucking Pebble. In November. <laughs> try, yeah, try, that's the he's goal in life, time. baby. <laughs> trying to just be at Pebble as much as humanly possible <laughs> without having to pay for it. Awesome. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> Find you a sugar daddy. Yeah, it's perfect. But even we were playing the hay, which, you know, the hard, the longest hole there is like 104 yards. Mm. And he just was hitting these legit in matches, just hooks through trees yeah. and shit. And trying, <laughs> yeah. And he's just, I'm like, that looks so much more fun than yeah. me grinding out here trying it to like. It does look fun. Yeah. yeah. He just has so much fun with it. Uh, but yeah, he's a good dude. He's fun to play with. Have you played with him at all? Uh, I've seen him a couple of times. But I haven't played with him, no. You guys just happen to be in New Zealand at the same time? Uh no, I think he left a little early. I don't know what he left early for, but I'm gonna I'm going up to Canada in June. And I'm gonna have a few videos with him as well. So nice, that'll be cool. Going up to Banff. Have you guys wow, been? dude, that's one of the places I really want to go. Banff is the most beautiful place I've ever been in my life. That's like the I Vancouver mean, side, right? No, no, no it's, it's in the, the middle, middle of the country, it's but the it's like in the mountains. It's most un- it looks it's like un- the northern rock. It mountains. looks it's unbelievable. Yeah. yeah, it is. So like Lake Louise, yes. right there. Yes, is the single like most aesthetically pleasing yes. picturesque place i've ever been in my entire it's life a place with like the glass like the glassy like light yep, blue yep, water yep, yep. Sure. and they always do somebody always skates out there like yeah, right at the beginning it. of winter yeah. there's always it's a video insane. of some hockey guy out there skating. is that gonna be your first time ever going yes or you've been, that's my first time that's the great. only thing i'm kind of bummed about is that apparently they're pretty strict with drones there and that's oh. the one fucking place that would look sick you, you gotta drones. fly the drone yeah there. i know yeah, you gotta turn off all the shit and all the sensors and just exactly this is the golf course i mean assuming you're playing that fairmont course yes i am 
That's dumb. It looks fucking unreal. So I went to a that's wedding dumb. at the Fairmont. Yeah. And really? that's why we were there. And yeah. it legit just the most breathtaking place I've ever been. Well, it's like Cabot. Canada's very beautiful in the summer. Yeah, Canada. It's stunning. Canada's great. Canada's great. I like Canada. It's great. Like Canada. I uh I made Stanley Cups for them recently, but I was listening to speaking to Canadians Tom Green today on uh he was on Rogan within the last oh. week or so. He was talking a lot about Canada. Kind of got Tom him. Green, man. Like I dominated like the nineties. Oh, he was incredible. My bum is on yeah. your lips. My bum is on your lips. <laughs> I got no idea. <laughs> like, Tom really? Tom this is no, no way. No, yeah. No. Who's Tom Green? You young and he was he had like a show. Was it called the Tom was it the Tom, Tom Green, Green show? Tom Green show. Yeah, he's this Brandon has no idea who Tom Green is. T- Tom Green was like he was this He was like I'm like Sasha Barrett Cohen type guy where he would just go fuck with people. Yeah. And like, yeah, he's like a stand up comedian. He was in a bunch of, he's in a good amount of movies oh, too, but he Dude, was, he's in, um, is it Euro trip where he has the snake? I think so. And the, and he's feeding the rat, the snake. He's like, Oh, <laughs> you don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Man, is. This is, I feel like I'm, what are you looking at? Alex Bush? No idea. Guys, You're too old. Too, you're a dork. Probably or jerking off to anime or some shit. <laughs> Did you guys see that last night? When he fell asleep in the yeah. car. Yeah, yeah, I saw that shit. Dude, he falls. We were in he the car. Oh, I saw that. Shine and he's watching. You, what the fuck were you watching? Face Clan or something? I was watching Call of Duty League. He was watching Call of Duty uh, League and fell asleep in the back in the back seat watching Call of Duty League. Comfort content. It was unbelievable. <laughs> oh yeah, I've seen this guy before. Hey, he's just trying to get better. COD. Yeah, Tom Green is a legend, man. <laughs> What was he saying about Canada? Is he Canadian? Yeah, he's Canadian. Uh, yeah, Tom Green was... Anyways, he was great on the show, and he's Canadian. So that's, again, I'm just bringing everything back to what country people were from. I looked it up, Oscar Pistorius, South African. You were right about that. So I was correct about that. Yeah. Uh, what are you? got any other big trips coming up? Got Australia in April, but my friend has Fuck. to... Has to um, He's trying to set up the golf courses or else maybe that one might fall through. Should have knocked out New Zealand, Australia. Right yeah, I should have. But Fuck me. we had this qualifier. Getting your points. You're and, getting your flyer miles. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, had, I had to come back here for the Myrtle Beach thing. Yeah, yeah. Just couldn't right. miss that. You guys aren't allowed to talk about that, are you? NDAs? I cannot Very speak. serious. I no, cannot. we can. I think we can talk about that we had a qualifier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we played in the qualifier. It was yeah. super fun, but we're not allowed to say No results. No, results. nothing. Yeah, no, yeah. NDAs have been signed. You're allowed to talk about that? Or is that in the NDA? <laughs> I, know. Great. I don't know the extent of it. I don't know the extent Listen, of it. Listen, I think it's fine. It's a Myrtle Beach qualifier. It's not like you're, you're leaking the freaking <laughs> presidential election or yeah. something. Hopefully that's not already determined. Either. I think it might <laughs> yeah, be. Hopefully it's supposed not. supposed to be a free See what's going on. Election. Someone just on an NDA. People running know. through Mexico. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> know. Running through Mexico. <laughs> Jesus. God. Uh, where are all you going to play in Australia? Well, right uh, now, nowhere. I'm trying to get Royal Melbourne. Um, yep. Good one. Kingston Heath. I think there's a course called like Metropolis. We played Metropolis. Kingston Heath. Yeah. That was when we were all. So you're loopy. doing the sandbox. Have you guys played all those? Dude. I haven't. I've played a few of them. I've played Metropolis. I've played Victoria Golf Club. Oh, I haven't played one. Royal Melbourne, but that area. I mean, the sandbox like one we of the best landed for golf ever. from 24 hours of flying from New York, and the first thing we did was we went to Kingston Heath. We did. Oh yeah, I Kingston think we, Heath. Yeah. I think we got changed in like the parking lot, and Straight I was there. I was literally a gummy bear. I couldn't <laughs> swing. I could not swing the. Were you guys club. able to film out there? Yeah, yeah. Oh, but I sick. swear I don't remember great. a that's single sick. thing. I was so tired. I was delusional. <laughs> I didn't sleep on the plane. I, it was just twenty four hours. I don't being really up. get jet lagged. Oh, I, I some sort of like superpower I have. I don't know what's going on, dude. That was my first time ever flying out of the country, and it was just to Australia. Oh, so it was like it's a big ocean. Whoa! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we yeah. landed, and I was like, "This is crazy." What I feel like, I felt like I was like high. How long were y'all in Australia? We went for the President's Cup, and then we stayed a week after. Yeah, we were like went a to Bar Yeah. Um, yeah, Tasmania. We went to Tasmania. Oh, I heard there's some sick ones over there. Yeah, Barnboogle. Barnboogle. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Did you, you guys see a Tasmanian devil? No. They're, are they not like around? I mean, I think they are. Are those real things? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I it was they, don't, they don't look like. They don't look like. <laughs> like I said, they don't look their shirts off and shit. And fucking, they're not cartoon. It's like no. real. It's like a real thing. It's like a rodent. It's like a rodent. But think. dude, yeah, there right. was a um, Trent, <laughs> Trent Ryan hit the pin on a par three at Barn Boogle, and mm. Jake Bass, our old uh, producer, wasn't filming. He didn't hit record. Oh my! Oh my! But it almost record. went in, and it it was all four of us through darts. Trent. Almost hit the stick it on the most beautiful par three you've ever. It's like the ocean. fourth hole at Barn Boogle, this yeah. big reveal, dunes, ocean. Oh. And then all four of us hit, and Jake Bass just goes, Guys, I got bad news. Thank, well, thank, <laughs> first, he said, Thank God that didn't go in. Yeah. Goes, I didn't, I wasn't recording any of that. We were like, <laughs> I'm sure Trent took that well. 
<laughs> and then of course all four of us like hit in the fucking ocean well so then he was like just redo it all and we we're like okay and then yeah trent hit it in the bunker and then in the bunker was like the most poisonous snake in australia it was like this what? black snake mm -hmm. that was like slithering under the under the sand so like it was Could peeking out and like i think whoever we were with was like don't go in there i don't know if we had a caddy that day or something i don't remember too but someone said not to go in there did somebody have a guy in australia that we were texting pictures of these things too being been. like is this dangerous They're like that <laughs> is unbelievably dangerous yeah, it was bad <laughs> It so. was this like black snake that was just circling Trent's ball. Well, they say that, that um, Tasmania is where the devil keeps its pets. That's, that's why I just don't like that really? line. I figured so that would be like middle of Australia. Like, yeah. the nope. Desert. Desert. I think it was Tasmania. <laughs> yeah. it's, just, it's just a very just something about it. I don't know. You could tell that it's like a safe haven for nastiness of animals. It's just, just mean, mean suckers everywhere. Yeah, and it's just beautiful, but it's like green and it's, oh, it's, a, it's an amazing place. It's, it's kind of weird that Australia fucking, you could die from everything over there and you go to yeah. New Zealand, nothing, literally nothing can kill you in New Zealand. Really? Yeah, they yeah. don't, well, they like not allow snakes and stuff? Yeah, they, they I don't like, know. No, I, what that's done. like a they thing. just check them at TSA? Yeah, no. <laughs> I no, tried, but No, literally, like it's just like, at there's, customs. when you're an island, right, we have to see a green card. When you're an island nation, you can protect against things coming into your country. No, they, they take it seriously. Yes. Yeah, Send this guy back to America. Have him go through Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> Just walk out. Just walk out. <laughs> you're not allowed in New Zealand, but you can definitely get in Your Arizona. kind's not welcome here, Did you sir. watch like a documentary this weekend or something? So no, 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 no. It's just, you know, Twitter. Uh, we, were, we were with a lot of like boisterous men this weekend yeah, we were. like have a lot of opinions and you know you just hear a lot of fucking stuff. borders you, travesty yeah. <laughs> that's a uh, that's a shane gillis joke where he's just like my dad sitting in philadelphia watching the news just be like southern borders a mess right now <laughs> <laughs> he's like dad what's gonna happen to you he's like you think someone's gonna come up to like your sales job at like the at the car dealership and be like i have your job now you're fine he's like you're fine <laughs> like, southern borders a mess Nancy Pelosi's a bitch. <laughs> Shane Gillis. Shane Gillis is the best. Uh, I don't care what anyone thinks of him with his SNL performance. He's amazing. Yeah. He's so good. He's good. Oh, Dan Soder also has a new uh, special on YouTube. I have to plug that. I watched it on the plane on the way here. It's on YouTube. Free to everyone. I watched it on the plane here. I was laughing so hard I had to stop watching. The guy next to me was like, what are you watching? I was like, it's just a comedian. Our friends at ZipRecruiter conducted a recent survey and found that the top hiring challenge employers face for 2024 is a lack of qualified candidates. But if you're an employer and need to hire, here is the good news. ZipRecruiter has smart tools and features that help you find more qualified candidates fast. Right now, you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash foreplay. That is ZipRecruiter.com slash foreplay. As soon as you post your job, ZipRecruiter's powerful matching technology shows you candidates whose skills and experience match it. You can use ZipRecruiter's invite to apply feature to send top candidates a personalized invite to encourage them to respond to your job post. You got to find good candidates. That's just the key. It's becoming a necessity at this point. The world is shifting into a place where finding good workers is actually not easy. Um, and no, no matter what business you have, I feel like it's not easy right now. There's not very many good candidates. I feel like the COVID era pushed everyone inside and now no one knows how to interact and no one knows how to have any any work ethic. It's it's hard out there right now. A lot of businesses are struggling to find the right people. If you are a business, if you have, um, you know, if, if, if this is falling into your category, try it out. There's really, there's really no downside to trying this. No reason not to. You should let ZipRecruiter help you conquer the biggest hiring challenge, which is finding qualified candidates. See why four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. Go to this exclusive web address right now to try ZipRecruiter for free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash foreplay. Again, that is ZipRecruiter.com slash F-O-R-E-P-L-A-Y. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. I told Robbie Berger today that he's got to do stand up. I feel like that's the next frontier. Robbie's unbelievable. He uh, that man could talk. I told him today because I was like, they they're move they moved. Yeah, fully. all of them to Jupiter, and uh, so I was asking him. I was like, oh, do you think that moving to Jupiter, moving out of LA, is going to be harder for you to get opportunities? He's like, no, you know, good, good. I think of or you know, they might move to Florida, Grants in Florida, whatever. I go, no, no, no. Like, 
You're going to be a movie star, Robbie. <laughs> We're not talking about golf YouTube. Like, <laughs> we need to get your Netflix special off the yeah. and goes, I appreciate that rap report. <laughs> <laughs> He's so situationally funny, like almost more situation situationally funny than anyone I've ever met, where he can just like see anything happening and makes like a really, really funny joke about it. Like, so his... My best man at my wedding is his cousin, his first cousin, Kyle, Kyle Berger, Robbie Berger. And um, he goes down and visits his aunt and uncle, Robbie's dad and his mom um, all the time because they're really tight. And he was saying that he went to one of those uh, Jackals games, Kyle did, and was watching softball, his uncle play. And he's like, Frank, I can't even explain to you how much respect I have for this kid that he's able to make those videos. Cause he's like, I'm watching it and it's just old men playing softball. Like I wouldn't even know how to find the things that he finds. And then when you watch Robbie do the Jackal content, it's, it's like, it's a legit comedy series it's really funny. where he has all the names and someone's falling and it's like, <laughs> it's just a guy stretching, but the music he puts to it, like, that's what I mean is like, I don't know. That he would excel as much as like a stand-up comedian telling Bada Bing jokes. He is, I don't know, he might be like the most unique comedy you'll find. He's like a 21st century comedian where it's like he needs the video with the song. He's amazing. I don't know how he does it. He's a magician. Totally. <laughs> Tower wins out of me. I know. I think but his voice, his, 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 that his delivery, you can't his delivery would yeah, yeah. crush. Can't teach that delivery. It's like Sebastian Maniscalco. And like the way that he like pauses and stuff, like he just, he has a way of the, of the room very much paying attention. Mm-hmm. And he's always been like that. Apparently that's what they say. But even when he was working at the four seasons, it was like, imagine him at the front desk of a hotel. Just yeah, like, yeah. We were oh talking today about restaurants in LA and in the middle of the conversation, he goes, that went great rap report. And then just turns around. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, the conversation's over. He just—he was gone. <laughs> yeah, we when we did our first video with them, that went great. Uh, out in it was in Cali, right? We went to like that yeah. random resort, Quail Lodge. Quail Lodge, that's right. It's like San Diego, right? Um, uh, no, oh, no, up north, up north. Um, Ma- it's in this uh, pebble. Bob, uh, got area. <laughs> you ever heard of it? Yeah, it's a little area we it go goes, to sometimes. Yeah, okay, Bob pebble. got. Sick. We were there again. We were. <laughs> He got sick the night before our first round and we all had a huge dinner where it was going to be like three different steaks we were trying. It was like three different cuts of meat. It was like a whole entire thing. And I texted him and I was like, these guys haven't met you yet, but I know because I had known him prior just from being friends with Kyle. And I'm like, I know, if I know your content and I know what you love, it's that you're this is the thing you're missing the most is this dinner with all the people that you're about to meet and share like a, a steak tasting. And he's like, you know what? The way he says it, he's like, you know what, pal? You hit that right on the head. It's just like <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. But um, yeah, it's amazing. There's like people that you can meet now in this new golf world, this YouTube golf space. There's definitely some characters. There is. Yeah. Let's get some Domino's pizza. Yeah, right I'm now. starving. Oh, you know, you about that? Yes. All yeah. Right. I think we're going to house some Domino's pizza. Luke Kwan. Uh, shout out to Borelli's, next... but I do have Domino's on the road. It is what it is. I'll have it. I'll, I'll eat any pizza, but shout out to Borelli's. Nice come a long way on that. I didn't think yeah, you... when I'm out of state, when I'm in fucking South Carolina, I'll have anything. I'm not going to Domino's in Long it's Island. No chance. You got to get what you got to get. Uh, six weeks or so, is that when you guys, the qualifier's coming out? Yeah. Right? yeah. It's, it's April something. All right. Hell yeah. Well, thank you for joining. Yep. Thanks for having me. Uh, good to catch up with you. Great to hear your story as always. See you at the Classic tomorrow. Barcelona Classic. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. You're going to be out there all day. Yeah. Yeah. We got an interesting game for Dan. What is it? See if I can hang. What is it? Uh, we're just, it sounds like when someone does something bad, drink it truly. Basically. <laughs> yeah. <Ooh>. yeah. Incredible. <laughs> yes. I just have a feeling that you're a much heavier drinker than we are. So we're going to have, we're going to be in some problems. It's a compliment. Have Are a sure? couple of them before I have to sing the national anthem. It's going to be jarring. <laughs> you know, we're going to get you on video of yeah. you singing it. No, yeah, it's unfortunate, but He's it's the first one. He's pretty good. But it's Actually, the first, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, maybe not then. No, he's solid. He, the, I am waiting he, for the first voice crack, <laughs> and it's going to come at some point. <laughs> Especially coming off this weekend. Yeah. You're not like at your, your Cause voice. Because like, at the end, healthy. I really go for it, yeah, and yeah. I've nailed it pretty much like every time. Wait, it sounds like you do this often. He does. I, I, I mean, we have a ton of Barstool Classics, and I'll do them at like maybe 10% of them if I feel good in the morning. Wow. Yeah, but he... I, the thing I'm worried about is you haven't done it in a while. I haven't done it in a so while. So he likes to rev up throughout the year. And he starts to get a little more cocky. Like, of the free, I, if I, when I go for it, one of these days it's going to be like, ah, I know it. <laughs> and everyone's, it's going to cut through people like fucking, oof. It's going to be bad, but it's, we'll see. It's going to be a good clip. All right. Thank All you, right. Luke. We appreciate you. Uh, we'll fun. see everybody out there tomorrow at the Barstool Classic. We'll be back on Thursday. Per Check usual. out his stuff on YouTube. It's amazing. And on Instagram.
his thank artsy you. ass Instagram you, that he's got. You. What's the what's the is it just Luke Quan Golf? What is on it? Instagram? Uh, oh, Luke Quan then... Golf on YouTube. Okay. Luke dot Quan on Instagram. I don't care about the Instagram. Don't follow that. <laughs> no, you. <yeah. laughs> it's good stuff. It's a great don't. answer. It's a great answer. All right, we'll be back on Thursday. Hit it hard. Hit, hit hard. It hard.